Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us for this segment, we have Mario Stefanidis, Vice President of Research at Roundhill Investments, to discuss the global video games market and how investors can get exposure to the space. It is great to have you with us, Mario. Welcome to Trade Talks. Thanks for having me, Jill. You got it. Let's uh, provide some context here. Just how big is the video game market? So the global video games market is about $180 billion um, in size in uh, annual revenues. You know, for comparison, if you look at the global box office, you're looking at a $45 billion box office pre-pandemic. And if you look at the music industry, you're looking at about $25 billion. So when you combine both of those, the global games market is still three times as large. Um, it's really made up of a lot of different segments and a lot of different geographies. So you have the United States and China, which are kind of the two biggest markets. And then you also have other countries in Asia Pacific, like South Korea, um, Japan, uh, India, to name a few, uh, that are growing quite rapidly as well. Um, you can also segment the market by uh, uh, console type. So you have you know, your traditional video game consoles that historically made up um, the biggest chunk of the market, but have now shrunk in importance. You have PC gaming as well. And the third, which is now the largest and the fastest growing, is mobile. So the proliferation of uh, mobile devices um, in Asia, particularly targeting uh, emerging markets where a lot of uh, consumers have an Android-based smartphone that's two to three times cheaper than a premium console, has led to this explosion um, in mobile gaming. So mobile is really the largest at 90 billion. And then you know, going down the line, you have consoles and, and PC as well. How is the gaming market being impacted by consumer and regulatory trends? Sure. Uh, so regulatory scrutiny has, you know, reared its head uh, in the United States uh, in the last couple of years. Um, China is no stranger to regulatory scrutiny. From 2000 to 2015, consoles were actually banned in the country. Um, and then since then, you've had uh, gaming license freezes uh, intermittently. The most recent one um, being initiated in April uh, 2021 and just getting lifted this year. Um, in the U.S., the FTC has now become the uh, watchdog for the for the video game market, and I think that adds legitimacy to gaming being a, a media category because the FTC typically looks at you know music and film, and now they're looking at gaming in the same light. But the shift away from the Justice Department to the FTC as the uh, arbiter um, for, for for gaming has led to a lot more scrutiny. So just to give you some examples. Um, Microsoft's uh, attempted purchase of Activision Blizzard for $68 billion um, would be the largest acquisition in gaming history, but it's facing a lot of regulatory hurdles um, from the FTC, as well as regulators uh, in Europe. Um, even smaller acquisitions like uh, Sony's planned uh, purchase of, um, of Bungie, which is the developer behind the uh, Destiny franchise, that's a $3.6 billion deal, a lot smaller, still facing scrutiny. Um, and the FTC there is concerned as to whether uh, the game will still be allowed to be played on other consoles um, versus just uh, Sony's PlayStation. And then even going smaller, um, Meta's planned purchase of a VR fitness app within, which the terms are undisclosed, but $400 million is the rumored purchase price. Um, that is being looked at as well uh, with, um, with the FTC uh, chairperson Khan uh, saying that having meta purchase it would give them a foothold over the metaverse. So we're really kind of uh, looking at scrutiny like across all angles and across all um, purchase sizes. The Roundhill Video Games ETF ticker NERD, NERD, very clever from our ETF listings team. Uh, you recently moved to the NASDAQ CTA Global Video Games Software Index. What was the rationale behind that? So we previously tracked um, an index focused on um, video games and esports particularly with an esports focus. Um, when we launched, launched the fund in 2019, um, there were no other funds focused on esports and there were just a couple focused on um, video games in general. Um, and you know, we thought this would give us a unique approach and a unique angle to the fund. Um, three years later, it's become clear that the esports market hasn't matured um, how we initially thought it would. Um, you have a handful of IPOs, like FaZe for example, but beyond that, there hasn't been kind of this confluence of uh, esports teams that we thought would go public. Um, so we changed the index um, a few months ago to be focused on um, global video game software. Um, so developers, publishers like Nintendo, um, EA, uh, to name a couple, those are the two largest weights in, in, in the fund and the index. Um, and we also have some other um, 
parameters as well that we follow. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, uh, we won't invest in um, China and Russia, you know, Russia for obvious reasons, but China, because we've really seen that market be more driven by regulatory um, developments rather than fundamentals. Um, the Chinese regulators last year called video games spiritual opium and uh, restricted minors to playing just three hours a week. Uh, there were other restrictions as well when it comes to streaming time, um, as well as the licenses of uh, freezes that I talked about, um, which make it hard to look at that market from a fundamental perspective versus a regulatory perspective. Mario, has there been any change in performance since you had the index shift? Um, you know, we have experienced the same headwinds um, as the broader technology sector um, with, you know, tailwinds coming whenever we see signs of, of inflation uh, abating. I think it's too soon to assess the performance since we just transitioned them um, a few months ago, but we're optimistic that um, the index and the fund um, will perform well, given that gaming uh, is poised to uh, grow substantially this decade. All right, Mario, appreciate the insight. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Thank you.